Oh, hey kids. Today we're going to learn about z-scores. It's going to be really fun. Let's get started. Let's start with some vocabulary. First, we have shifting. Adding a constant to each data value, which adds the same constant to the mean, the median, and the quartiles, but does not change the standard deviation. Next, we have rescaling which is multiplying each data value by a constant, which multiplies both the measurement of, a po of positions and the measure of spread. Our next vocabulary term is standardizing. Standardized values can be compared and combined to eliminate units. Next, we have standardized value, a value found by subtracting mean and dividing by the standard deviation. Our next term is parameter, a numerically valued attribute of a model, z-score, which tells us how many standard deviations a value is from the mean. Our next one is normal percentile, which gives us the percentage of values in a standard normal distribution. Lastly, we have the, the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. 68% of all values fall within one standard deviation of, th of the mean and 95% fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And 99.7% fall within three standard deviations of the, of the mean. Welcome back. Now let's teach you how to use a normal model. First, you have to check if the shape is symmetrical, and you can do that by making a picture. But how do we standardize scores that we can compare distribution? Well, we have to calculate the z-score. The way you do that is by this formula located right here. z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And a positive z-score means that it's greater than the mean, which means it's located on this half of the curve. A negative score means that it's below the mean, which means it's located on this half of the curve. For example, what are the chances of a man being 65 inches tall or less given a mean of 69 and a standard deviation of 2.5? Well, first you have to draw your bell curve and shape in the corresponding zone. Then you have to calculate the z-score using this equation that I told you earlier. 65 is your x. 69 is your mean, and 2.5 is your standard deviation, which, when all put together and added up, equals negative 1.6. Wait, you're not done. We have to look inside the book on page A78 and check the chart. Check out what negative 1.6 equals as a z-score. That equals 0 0.058. Turning that into a percentage gives you 5.8%. So the final answer is you have a 5.8% chance that a man will be 65 inches or shorter. Now we're going to look at a second example. We're trying to find the tallest 10% of men. But you can't find the tallest 10% of men because curves only work from left to right. So we have to find 90%. We got that number by subtracting the 10% from 100. Now, looking it up in the Z table, you have to look up 0.9 which gives us a z-score of 1.28. In this equation, we have to work backwards, since we do not know x yet. So we put 1.28, which is your z-score, equal to x minus 69 divided by 2.5. To figure this out, we have to cross multiply first, giving us x minus 69 equals 3.2. Then we add 69 to both sides, giving us x equals 72.2. And that's the answer. So we just put it in the context. The tallest men are 72.2 inches or taller. Now it's your turn. Let's have you do this problem right here. How tall are the shortest 5% of men given a mean of 69 and a standard deviation of 2.5? Good luck.
you got the right answer. BAM! Did you get an answer of negative 1.645? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Because x equals 64.89 inches. In context, the answer is the shortest 5% of men are 64.89 inches or shorter. What can go wrong in a problem like this? Well, you have to make sure the data is symmetrical and unimodal. Do not use x bar and sx when data has outliers. Do not round too soon. Go at least two decimal places back in your answer. Always answer in context. 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 You're going to do just great. Z-scores, oh I love Z-scores. Make me happy when skies are gray. They're so far. <laughs> Dude.